So I spent more making the patch than buying it. Yeah. So in other words, I'm buying the patches. <laughs> Good morning. It is Tuesday, October 25th. And I did not get on here yesterday because there was nothing really to see. <laughs> I came in late. I came in at like three and I didn't really have anything to do. There was nothing really going on. So I decided to do Tuesday to start my week. Hello, I'm Dawn. Welcome, welcome back. I am a teen librarian in a public library and I vlog from work so that you can see what it's like to be a librarian whilst I vlog my book. It's probably not what you thought. I always kind of start off my vlog like that because just in case there's new people, hi, that's probably not what you thought. I'm really curious to think what you think librarians do all day. So uh, let me know before you start getting into this vlog. What do you think I do all day? All right. Uh, the book du jour is The Honeys by Ryan Lasala. This is mystery horror. And it is about a set of twins named Mars and Caroline. And Caroline goes to this really fancy exclusive adventure camp every summer but her and her group of friends are called the honeys and they kind of stick to themselves and take care of the bees and they really don't do much adventuring so one summer after camp is over or no I think she comes back in the middle of camp or something and she has basically turned into a zombie and tries to kill the whole family and she ends up dying and her brother who used to go to the camp and he doesn't anymore because he is gender fluid and they don't take too kindly to the gender fluids. He's decided to butch up and look like a man, kinda, and go back to the camp and try and find out what really killed her because he doesn't think that she died of natural causes. Sometimes the darkest secrets lurk in the broad daylight. Okay, this is why a FYI, it is a spooky season, and so why not read a spooky book? Otherwise, I don't have any programs this week. Uh, yay. And I know you're like, um, so then if you're a programming librarian, which kind of I am, then what are you going to do all week if you have no programs? I will tell you. I will be planning programs. If I'm not doing programs, I am planning them. Our next newsletter is December, January goes out to every home in our district and I have to figure out what programs I'm going to be doing I know I have I have like a week so the deadline for the newsletter is November 1st that is next week a week exactly and I have to practice said crafts programs before I write it in blood in the calendar <laughs> and I have not practiced them yet so today I will be practicing my book nook all day that's all i'm doing is my book nook i've already kind of started here it is i've kind of sketched out what i want to do i 3d printed this um i'll hold it up oh no my computer just shut off jesus i 3d printed this little couch chair couch chair that is not a thing this lounge chair isn't it cute it's 3d printed it's cute i didn't think it was going to turn out this well but yeah it's a little big. This took an hour and a half. No. My ring light went off. My computer is being a butt. I don't know what is going on. And so when my computer turns off, my ring light turns off. Hello. Well, that is my whole day is trying to figure out how I am going to get this book nook together. Basically what I have to do is I have to decide if it is a viable program. So I have to see if I can get it done within a two hour time frame because that is the maximum amount of time that I have my programs. Two hours minimum is hour and a half. I have to figure out, you know, the gluing, what type of glue is going to be required. Is it going to glue on time? Can they paint it? Is the paint going to dry in time? um all the little decorating pieces like if you know a book nook you know that you the fun of it is to make everything out of scraps or other stuff it's not buying a table like i bought this table from the dollar tree but i mean 
it was a dollar 25 and it's you know it's good enough so some things will be made and some things will be purchased but i'm not going to purchase the books i'm going here are the book covers i'm going to print out the book covers and they're going to have to make the books themselves they're going to have to make the bookshelves all themselves i'll be 3d printing some chairs i'll be laser cutting some other furniture and they have to put it together themselves and so i have to make sure that i have enough time to do all of that in a two hour time frame if it's too hard then i can't put it in the calendar we can't do it so um actually if it's too hard what i'll end up doing is make it a caregiver teen program and basically what that means is parents or caregivers can do the program with their teen usually my programs are teen only 12 12 year olds to 18 year olds and i don't allow anybody younger or older in my programs unless it is like a cooking program and the parents want to watch or if it is a caregiver slash teen program where the parents can come and do the program with the teen. So if it's too hard, that's what I will do. Hopefully it's not too hard. So that's all I am doing today. I'm gonna eat first and then I am going to get all my stuff together for this book nook. Okay, I'll see you later. Oh, and listen to the book. It's a reading vlog, I, I gotta listen to the book. Goodbye. Update on the honeys. I am listening to it and what it is doing, which I think is really cool, is because it's talking about bees and they're at a camp and they're outside, it's like a wilderness camp. There's a lot of audio of like buzzing and just outside noises, you know, that white noise of just being outside. If you hear all that humming in the background, it's a laser printer, it's, it's cutting right now, so laser cutter not laser printer that's something else laser cutter is cutting uh so i do like how it is sounding at first i was listening to it and i was like what is that noise and then i like paused it and i was like oh it's the audiobook <laughs> so that's fun for it to be like this exclusive camp where you have to be really wealthy to attend doesn't sound like it it sounds like the accommodations are shit it's like being fake poor for the summer i don't know it is very like weird and creepy the girls he meets the honeys that he meets at the funeral they're weird and we um have been introduced to a couple of bros uh so that'll make for some fun bullying i'm sure but so far so good it's got a pretty good rating on goodreads so so far so good i've, I've gotten nowhere by the way absolutely nowhere nowhere yeah nowhere it has been i've been at work for two and a half hours i i'm still in the planning stages it's 2 30 i got an 11 and I had a meeting, so I didn't really get started until like 1, 12.45. But I am just about to get started to do this. So I have like, I gotta, this is the outside of it. And I gotta peel all this off. And then here is all of the stuff that I gotta put together. So, yes, I have to get all this and see if I can do it in two hours. I've never done a book nook before, so I'm I'm excited to do it, but I am just like, oh man, this is, this is going to be kind of a nightmare. So I'm going to take you on my journey with me. Update on the honeys. I am almost halfway through. And I can say that I do not like the dialogue, but I think it's just because I'm an adult. Listening to teens talk, their banter is, <laughs> their banter is uninteresting, uh, but that's how teens talk and it's written for teens. So I think teens will like it. I personally don't like the banter. I do like uh, Mars. I do like Mars 
when he's his his inner monologue I do like that but I don't like the dialogue I do think that it's a little slow for it to be horror nothing much has happened he's he's on camp he's in the camp and he's just doing camp things like fencing and rock climbing big whoop like let's get to the to the murder mystery you know what I mean like it it's not going anywhere we're just still doing camp stuff it's a murder mystery I don't care about camp stuff so it's really slow it's only like 350 pages but it's really slow so I'm not liking that too much I, I'm overwhelmed already I'm overwhelmed but it's gotta take it a little bit of time a little bit at a time all right see you later update update it is five o'clock uh and i'm getting nowhere fast <laughs> all i've done is paint and put my library shelves together and yeah i've not assembled it i'm it's it's gonna be interesting to see how we're gonna put this in a two-hour program update on the book i'm bored I keep waiting for him to try to solve the murder mystery and he's just tutting around hearing things and seeing things and getting his ass kicked and seeing things and I'm like okay dude also this book is really on the nose and maybe because it's a teen book but all of the honey motifs and the queen bee metaphors and it's like, dude, I'm getting smacked over the face with the honey metaphors. Teens are not that dumb. Like, even his name is Mars, which people who live in Mars are Martians, aliens. And he's like an alien kind of because he is different. He's not a bro like those other guys. Um, I guess that one's a little bit more subtle, but I'm kind of bored now. So I got about 20% left of the book. I have, I didn't think I was going to spend my whole day doing this. I was like, ah, I'll probably have a couple hours. No, I leave at seven. Hopefully by seven o'clock, you will see a completed book nook.
Today I'm going to be practicing my jean jacket redo program. I'm really bad at naming programs, but essentially I'm going to let teens bring in a jean jacket or I'll provide one from the Salvation Army and they can put patches on it or studs or iron on or whatever they want to do. And I'll supply all of the craft stuff, but I have to practice it first. So this is what I am doing today. fancy embroidery machines they're like eight hundred dollars um we don't use them because it's hard to teach embroidery to teens so until i find an adult who can teach it to adults i will do that until then it just kind of sits but i'm gonna use it today if i do this program i will pre-embroider and what i can do is have them embroidery machine going so they can at least see the machine in action. that there's going to be 15 different thread changes and it's going to take an hour. Oh, geez. 30,000 stitches. To do when all I can is thinking about you Not doing well Don't know where you are Cause you're not here It's been way too long I could lay down beside you I would, I would When nothing really matters That's all I want to do I hope that you're safe And that I will see you soon If I could lay down beside you hours later all right let's see what it looks like what should have done is put my jacket in the embroidery machine and had an embroider right on the jacket that's what I should have done and if you said that whilst you watch me cut this out 
good on you. The reason why I didn't do it that way is because I was going to be thrifty and make my own patches. I was gonna try and not spend money on patches and make them because I wanted to use the embroidery machine, but patches literally cost like 25 cents. Like, I, I just bought like 150 patches for like $25, maybe $30. So, yeah, this is this is a waste of time. I get paid upwards of $20 an hour, a little more than $20 an hour, a lot more than $20 an hour. That's not the point. The point is I pay $30 for 150 patches that took me about 15 minutes to do. Whereas I spent two hours, pretty much, making this patch. That was like $50, probably more, like $55. So I spent more making the patch than buying it. Yeah. So, in other words, I'm buying the patches. <laughs> Oh, this is the little that's one. A, this is the little one. That's a medium. <laughs> you didn't do this the big one. It, uh, <laughs> it tells you the big one takes it almost an hour because of all the thread. This changes. was an hour. This was sixty-two minutes. <laughs> it doesn't look like a big one. Oh man. So I'm done with the honeys, and I think I'm gonna give it a three seven five. It was okay. I'll give it a four on Goods Read. Goods Read. That's not what it's called. Good Reads. And I will bump it down to a 375 though. I feel like the ending came out of nowhere just a little bit. It didn't, it didn't. Like there were, there was a major clue at the beginning of the book, but not really, if that makes any sense, which it doesn't. It's really not one of those books where the author wants you to try and figure out what's happening I think you're just supposed to go along for the ride and I'm fine with that but the ride was not Six Flags it was more carnival like like not a real shitty carnival but like a pretty good carnival but it still is not Six Flags I don't know if that analogy made any sense but there was one chapter that I liked a lot and it seemed like it was kind of poetry. He was in kind of like a dream state and there were things happening and the way it was written was really beautiful. And just like, I'm like working and this chapter comes on and it made me stop working and really pay attention. I was paying attention, but it made me stop what I was doing and just listen instead of like craft and listen. So that was a really cool chapter. It's right at the very end though. I don't know, kind of like last 25% of the book. So I did enjoy that. The metaphor, like I said, the B stuff, once again, on the nose. And at the end, you can tell that the author was really inspired by a particular movie. I'm going to do a little bit of a spoiler because I'm gonna tell you what movie this book is heavily inspired by. And when I hold the book up in camera, in the camera, that's when I'm spoiling it. So like fast forward. So as I put the book down, you can, you can chime, you can listen in again. Okay, so pause if you do not want to be spoiled. All right, so this book was heavily influenced by Heredity. If you saw the movie Heredity, uh, heavily influenced. But I guess like Heredity, you don't know what the hell is going on. Well, you kind of do it. I feel like Heredity gave better clues in this book. But yeah. Spoilers over. I do think this book is a really good book discussion book. So if you work with teens and you're watching this, then it's a good teen book discussion book. If you have a book club online or something, if you're a booktuber or just a casual reader and you're looking for 
a good book that has metaphors and you know symbolism a b like if you really love b symbolism this is your jam but yeah it's a good book to discuss i think my major problem is that the metaphor was too on the nose it seems like there's a lot of things you can do with like bees and honey and hive culture and um the queen bee like it seems like there's a lot you could do with that but after reading this book I'm not so sure because the metaphor just seemed to keep repeating itself ryan lasala didn't seem to know really what to do with it it was just like he was just using the same metaphors over and over and over again so maybe there's not a lot you can do with bees and honey and bees and honey my crafting is done for the day and the end of this video will be me at a community visit i am going to a oktoberfest which is weird because it has nothing to do with germany or german culture it's like a hayride and some food trucks. I... Anyway, I'm going to the community visit. I'll be representing the public library and I will give you some shots of us at the Oktoberfest. Until next week, which will be Halloween. Bye bye. Thank you.